The April update for Home Assistant version 2022.4 has just arrived, and this month is a big one with many new features, including some highly requested ones that we are sure you'll love. The long-awaited groups in the UI, a brand new Switches X feature, additional input assistance, and much more are all included in this release. We are going to talk about everything new in Home Assistant 2022.4, so let's get started. We'd say this release's theme has emphasized making things easier and streamlining the experience, which we love to see. Here are our top 10 features from Home Assistant version 2022.4. Number 10. Switches X Integration Do you know how a smart plug, a Shelly Sonoff or another type of relay will appear in Home Assistant as a switch with a toggle? But what if the smart plug or relay is genuinely in charge of a light, a fan, or even your garage door? It's possible that a switch isn't the right kind. You could get around this in the past by building a template of the original entity. Still, it isn't straightforward or quick for everyone. The new Switches X functionality allows you to quickly and simply transform a home assistant switch into another type, such as a light or cover, right from the UI. The following types are supported as of this release. Cover fan, light, lock, siren. Assume you have a smart plug, often represented as a switch in Home Assistant. However, because you have a desk light linked to the smart plug, it may be more meaningful for you to portray this configuration as light rather than a switch in the end. Thanks to the Switches X integration, you can now transform it very quickly. Number 9. Groups finally arrive in the UI. In recent months, the most requested feature has finally arrived. You can now create groups via the user interface. A group allows you to control many devices or entities in Home Assistant as a single entity. Many functions have moved to the UI in recent years, but groups have always remained in the config files until now. To set up a group, go to Configuration, Automation and Helpers, add a new helper, then select a group and a type. Finally, name the group and choose all the entities you want to combine together. This is an essential but excellent addition that many of us have been waiting for. Number 8. Even more input helpers. Both Groups and Switches X are found in Home Assistant's Helpers menu, although with Home Assistant 2022.4 there are some further changes. Derivate, Minmax, Threshold, Times of Day and Utility Meter helpers, to name a few. All of them can now be controlled through the Home Assistant UI. Derivative, Groups, a Riemann sum integral is a type of integration, min max, threshold, hours of the day, meter, utility. Number 7. Make entities disappear. Next, you may now conceal entities from the UI, which will assist in streamlining and keeping your installation cleaner and more organized. We've enabled and disabled entities in the UI until now. Deactivating an entity effectively removes it from the UI. You couldn't control it, it wouldn't be recorded in the database, and it appeared to be gone for all intents and purposes, but you could easily switch it back on if you wish. On the other hand, hide is a kind of middle ground. It prevents the entity from being displayed in the UI, so it won't appear on your Home Assistant dashboard or anywhere else. It will also hide them from HomeKit, Google Assistant, and Alexa, but they will still be logged and monitored if you need to look them up later. Again. This is very basic yet important functionality for keeping your instance clean. Number 6. Backups for everyone If you use Home Assistant OS or Supervised, you've had the option of taking frequent backups of your install anytime you make changes. However, Home Assistant Core and Container installations have never had this option. Instead of taking manual backups of your config files, 2022.4 adds the option to backup your Home Assistant container and core, making it easier to backup your install. The good news is that these backups are Home Assistant OS compatible and presumably supervised if you ever decide to move. Great! Number 5. Automation Improvements In 2022, automation will also experience some advancements. For starters, variables are now supported in an automation trigger, allowing you to refer to them later in your action. This could be useful for sending a notification showing which motion sensor caused automation, for example. Inside automation, there's also a new condition tester. This allows you to enter a condition in your automation and push the test button. If it turns green, it means the device or entity you've selected is now matching that condition. 
If it turns red, it means it isn't. Really excellent visual representation to ensure that the conditions are as expected. Number 4. Home Assistant Zone State Zone State is the next feature. You may now check the status of any zones you've created in Home Assistant and the number of people currently in that zone will be displayed in the zone state. This can be really useful if you want to design automation that checks if somebody is home. You can simply check the zone state and if it is zero, meaning no one is home, arm the alarm and so on. The number of people in each zone is now displayed in the zone state. Number three, update all the things. Another great thing about Home Assistant is the new update entity, a new type of entity in the app, just like the light and switch entities. The new update entity will allow integrations to notify you if an update is available. If the integration allows it, some entities may even let you start and finish installing firmware or upgrading it right from the same place you are. This is already in use for Home Assistant Core, Supervisor and OS upgrades, which allow you to install them directly. Home Assistant will be able to help you update your WLED firmware right from the Home Assistant interface. Other integrations like WLED have already done this. Just a few integrations support this right now, but it lays the groundwork for many other unique features in the future. I love it. Number 2. Adjusting Long-Term Statistics The final prominent feature of this edition is the ability to change long-term statistics. We're not one of these people, but we know that many of you enjoy keeping long-term statistics for years. But have you ever had it happen that a value accidentally enters your statistics, causing everything to fall apart? You can now correct these statistics using this new tool. It's under Developer Tools, which allows you to go in and fix any mistakes so that your data isn't skewed. Number 1. Worthy Mentions There was a lot of new functionality with this update, but we're not finished yet. There were a few other features and fixes worth mentioning. For starters, the database's performance has been improved once again, which should assist with database size and write reduction, which should benefit SD card lifetimes. Most installations, according to them, should see a 10 to 35% performance boost, which is always a plus. This edition includes seven new integrations, including the following AirZone, Backup, Kaleidoscape, PECO Outage Count, Assume the Role of X, Vulcan and Monet, Update. 19 additional integrations can be configured through the UI. Several new media sources have also been available in the media browser, including the following. Bluesound, HEOS, Home Entertainment System, by Denon, Forked Dad, Lin Open Home, Logitech Squeezebox, Daemon MPD, Music Player Daemon, Video Camera Panasonic Vera, Unify Protector, Yamaha Music Cast, and this release also includes several minor updates. Okay, there were a lot of features in this release. These enhancements to the quality of life and the focus on improving and streamlining the user experience are fantastic. But which of the new features is your favorite? Is there one or two you'd like me to go through in further detail? Please let me know as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment with your favorite part of the video. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment saying I subscribed and I'll personally reply to your comment. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.